Corvette Museum. So come along and we'll see what we can see. And uh, this is cool. It's another cool day on the Bueller Bunch. One of the neat things about this place is you can have a brick with your name on it or your car club and they're all around this place. So they're everywhere. buy your car from the museum and have a museum delivered car this is what they do they put it right on display right as you come in this place for everyone to see and this is where you pick up your car and you get to drive it through the middle of this place not very fast obviously to get it out of here so these cars are really fresh off the assembly line There's a little bit of everything. And believe me, you can afford a Corvette. It may not be a full-size one, but you can get one. These are cool. Uh, so this is my wall, and that's my name. And I am on the lifetime member foundation board as you come in so not only is a friend of mine has a brick in the front I've got my name on the wall a little bit just a little bit one up on you bud one up on you bud that's me forever on this wall that's cool so when you come into the museum you will see the entrance to the museum right behind me and uh, there are self-guided and there are guided tours. There are tours for large groups and they make everything available to you. And if you're a life member, you kind of get a little bit extra. If you are a member of the Corvette Museum, you get all kinds of little special perks. You get a certain percentage off in the gift shop and uh, they kind of treat you a little differently. But it's still a great tour and you can't complain. If you want to know the history of Corvette, this is Nirvana.
cool because it's all historic. Everywhere you look, it's Corvette, obviously, but you can hear the sounds, the sights. They, they really did it right. There's storefronts in here and bicycles and you, anything that, that resembles anything Corvette is, is in here. This is unique. So that car you see behind me has probably got the most, well, one of the most unique stories here at the museum. This was owned and bought brand new by a guy who owned a chain of grocery stores. He owned the car, bought brand new, only put about 2,300 miles on it, and he uh, rode around and his wife really didn't like that car. So what he did was he entombed it uh, in one of his new grocery stores and then it was exhumed in the 80s. And it's changed hands a few times, but then it finally was donated anonymously. And here it is today, and it's literally, that's it. It's got 2,300 miles on it. A 1954 Corvette with probably the most unique history behind it. Every car, you can press a little interactive thing, shows on the screen behind you, and you can listen to the stories of all of these cars. I like it. I think it's cool. The front end is cool. I don't like the back end. So if you're a Corvette guy, and you were wondering about the paint colors? Well, here they all are. <laughs> you got tons of paint colors from all the different years and all the different shades. Having a break at the Corvette Grill. Correction, Stingray Grill. Yeah. One odd thing that happened in 2014 was that the rotunda, which you'll see in a bit, caved in from a big, gigantic sinkhole that was developing underneath the building, unbeknownst to anyone here. At five o'clock in the morning when everybody came in, they discovered half of these cars that are in the rotunda fell into a gigantic sinkhole. Now, this car that you see behind me that car there was one of the cars that fell in the sinkhole. So that is a sinkhole survivor. And you will see that it fell over kind of onto its side into the hole. But there were a lot of cars that were lost. And then one of the cars that was really important to the museum was the one millionth Corvette. So the history of that one millionth Corvette, it took them eight months to restore it after they recovered it from the hole.
car you see behind me is literally the only 1983 Corvette in existence. Back in 1983, they had a hard time trying to keep up with technology and all the EPA and all this stuff that was impacting everything. So they made 43 of those particular Corvettes that year to try to keep up with technology. However, they couldn't get it done in time to make a 1983 model. So with the 1983 year coming to an end, so instead of making them 1984 Corvettes, they crushed them all. Yeah, that's right, they crushed them all, except for that one, and you saw it. Well, one thing you don't know, if you haven't been here in a while, back in the day they used to have this big yellow tape and that indicated the size of the, of the sinkhole. Well, this was all the sinkhole. But I guess they've taken up the tape probably because people were tripping on it and then they made a own, their own little rendition of what happened during that time. But they took the tape off the hole. But you'll see, if you're here, there's very faint lines on the floor. And that's where the original sinkhole uh, kind of was. And you can see it kind of zigzaggy. But this was all the sinkhole. So again, that one, one millionth Corvette, which is literally, I don't know, 30 feet from me. Um, looks like they're still doing work on it or it's not really officially on display since it's behind this big big glass door But that 100 or excuse me one millionth Corvette that was in the sinkhole and you saw the video on how they Tore it and put it all back together and restored it amazing that they could do that Even though that that car was out of production video I went to uh, the uh, antique archaeology which is American Pickers show well guess what <laughs> that motorcycle is from Mike's Wolf own his own collection you never know what you're going to find in this museum and how everybody here just contributes to it so everything from art to cars to memorabilia to toys a clothes, heck, even a Corvette sandwich. But you can see it all here at the Corvette Museum. And I hope you come out to take a look. Let this inspire you. Um, if you're into cars, this is the place. And you can spend hours at this place. So, Corvette Museum. What did we think? What did you think? I liked it. It was good. Yeah, I'm surprised because I'm not a car person. Yeah, so, you know, with you not being a car person, what did you take? I love the history of it all and the artistry and the creativity and the excitement of people. They it's, loved it. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's neat. They're, with every car that they got in there, there is some type of history going on and there's ex explanations of what that car is, how it came about, why it's there. Um, it, it, it's neat. They're, we're on what they call the Walk of Fame, so you can even buy a brick, a memorial brick, put your put your name on it, and they'll put it in here, and they'll map it out, and they'll tell you exactly where it is. It all goes to the donation of this museum. So we look forward to uh, well, we look forward to the next video, <laughs> but we look uh, it was fun. Just we had a blast at it. We uh, plan on being here. Uh, several hours. It's not something you can walk through in a minute or two. Several hours they have uh, a race car you can hop into and it's a it's a full-on car simulator and uh, there's uh, there's there's stuff outside of this as well. There's plant tours where you can see them build the Corvettes. 
There's also places that are uh, like, uh, they've got like little car museums in the neighborhood. So this is, this is a full day thing. If you're a car guy, you're a car nut, you wanna see cars, you wanna experience cars, this is the place to come. See you next time on the Bueller Brunch. Bye.